When you visit the Gippsland Lakes, you may be lucky enough to spot a pod of this area's resident species of dolphins, the Burranan dolphin. Seen only in these waters, Port Phillip Bay and a few open ocean areas from here to Tasmania. Rarer still would be a sighting of this team of scientists, slowly working their way back and forth across the lakes, tracking the movements and habits of this exclusive collection of cetaceans. Dr. Kate Charlton Robb is the person driving this remarkable project. Based at the Australian Marine Mammal Conservation Foundation, she spends a lot of her time studying the genetics and behaviour of the dolphin species that she identified in 2011, and to which she gave the formal name Terciops australis. There's only two places in the world that we have a known resident population of the Burranan dolphin. Here in the Gippsland Lakes, where there's around about 50 resident dolphins, meaning that they are staying in the system year-round, across season, across multiple years. And then also in Port Phillip Bay, there's another resident population. Well, they've been living under our noses for such a long time, and, and they're quite isolated from other dolphin species, so it's important to conserve biodiversity. And this area seems to be a really important habitat for for these dolphins. Kate uses a specially designed biopsy gun to sample free swimming dolphins. So it's powered just by having a ram set blank charges and, and a dart that's loaded into the barrel. So we'll just get all that ready to go. It may not look like a conventional tool used to research dolphins, but the tiny skin and blubber sample taken using a biopsy dart permits DNA analysis that unlocks a world of information. So the dart's just loaded into the modified barrel. It's basically designed just to go uh, six mil into, so it really has very shallow um, penetration. In, in that particular area that we're shooting, they have a good couple of mil of skin, and then they have a one to two centimetre layer of blubber, and then they have a 10 to 15 centimetre layer of muscle safety zone. So while you're transcribing, if you just put the date and the time um, and the GPS location of the hit, then um, what we do is when you get when you get the photo of the fin, or if you get the photo of the fin, we then just take a spacer shot between, so we know that the photo is leading up to the biopsy are of the animals that we're we're targeting. There's two out here. We'll see how we go with these ones. I'm not to biopsy when there's a dolphin directly behind or in, like obviously in front of, just there's permit conditions. So if the, if the last one to surface is at the back and it's clear at the back, we know there's four animals in here. So it's just about watching the behaviour of the surface for the shot. And that way, still with us, still with us. Turn this way, too close, sorry. Keep going, it's still on the bow. Maybe watch the dart. I'll get the dart, watch behaviour. Take GPS location, shot taken. Quick, quick, come on guys. Biopsy shot taken on the left hand side flank of the animal with the four, uh, six animals we've been tracking. It is an invasive thing and we don't take it lightly but the amount of information that we can get uh, from that one small sample is really crucial for the conservation and protection of this species and this population. Possible remnant sample, but no plug. Bagging that up as GB06. The researchers get to know the dolphins intimately, even giving them names, not sentimental names, but names based on physical characteristics so they can be recognised from year to year. But Kate can't be here every day, and she can't be everywhere at once. That's where locals and tourists can and do help. Having the community get involved with this kind of research is absolutely crucial. You know, these are the people that are on the water all the time. These are their lakes and their dolphins. And so they can jump on our website and, or email and they can report these sightings. So we might be all the way down in Lock Sport, but there might be sightings up at Lakes Entrance that we're missing out on. We can't be in all those places. So by people logging these sightings, we're able to put really important dots on the map 
that can tell us something about the range um, of the dolphins, where they're being seen, what time of day they're being seen, what season are they being seen in, and, and that doesn't need us to be down here all the time. The lake system provides a, a good environment. Obviously, there's enough food around to support. The dolphins can leave, um, you know, they can go out into Bass Strait and they can and they can leave the lake system. So the fact that they're choosing to stay here and live here is a really good indication that you know they're happy here and there is enough to be able to sustain their population. I love uh, the, the lake system. I think it's a really diverse area. I love that you can come out here and it can be absolutely dead calm and then 10 minutes later it can blow up. There's so many different envir different environmental aspects. You, you've got Duck Arm which is beautiful and tranquil. You can go down to Lock Sport and it's sort of open out here in Lake King. There's just so many different aspects. Um, that are so different and always changing that makes it, um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place.